Anyone remember Mary? 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 What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad that y'all are here. You know what time it is. Oh, I'm wearing my Biden shirt because um, I fucking can do what the hell I wanna do. It's time to review this week's episode of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. And I've got a really, really unpopular opinion to deliver to all of y'all. So hold on to your wigs. The past two weeks of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City were boring. There, I said it. They have fell completely flat. And I don't know what the hell is going on. Like, I'm still watching because I love the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City and those ladies just give me life. But something about the past two episodes, they are just falling flat. To me personally, and you know, y'all can come here and be like, I fucking disagree with you. And that's fine. We're allowed to disagree and agree. Agree to disagree. That's what I'm trying to say. But yeah, just find it to be a little flat. Let's dive into the review and my thoughts about this week's episode of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. So we begin to see this whole Meredith Gossip Foundation begin to be laid, and I feel like an epic blow-up is going to happen as we near the end of the season. That's right, the season is coming to an end. Andy Cohen tweeted out to send him questions because they're getting ready to film the reunion. I'm not ready to let go of the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. I refuse to do it. Anyone remember Mary? 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 She's literally had one scene the past two weeks. She had a quick little cameo scene the very beginning of the episode when she's FaceTiming with her son because she's upset that he used her money to buy the Prada handbag that he gave to his girlfriend for Christmas. So yeah, she's a little, she's pressed about that. And that's all we saw of Mary, that one quick scene. She was not in the rest of the episode. And remember last week when I told y'all that Mary was originally filmed as a friend of? Yeah, now it's kind of making sense. So Mary was originally filmed as a friend of role, but a new production company took over filming The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City and they bumped her up to a full-time housewife. So now they're editing her back in to have a more prominent role. But whoever's doing this editing, they have got to be fired because just one quick scene does not make a full-time housewife. There, I said it. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So this week, we also see a lot more of the husbands. They play a very prominent role in this week's episode of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Quick little montage because that's how I roll. Whitney and her husband are having a date night. Spoiler alert, Whitney enjoys a good role play. Like the homely mom that's like, oh, oh no, my shirt's falling off. The homely mom. Jen Shaw, she's over there trying to nurse her son back to health because he is sick, Rona. I'm kidding, it's not Rona, but yeah, she's being a good mother. She made him soup, trying to get him back on good, good health. Heather though, she's over here building a bigger and better beauty lab and laser. That's right, it's time to upgrade. Let me, let me upgrade you. Go on, Heather, growing that business, yes. Growing it so much, it needs a bigger space. She's she's living her life. Heather, she is out here thriving. She has found her niche with the, with the fillers and the Botox. You know, good for you. I love Heather so much. She is out here hustling, making those coins. You know, Beauty Lab has allowed her to, you know, find her purpose in life and really, it gave her a voice after her divorce. And I just really like seeing Heather. I love, I love Heather so much. My personal life, not so great. But at Beauty Lab, I am killing it. I still love Jen. Heather is just really doing it for me. She is like so fucking relatable. I love it. So now let's go over to Meredith. So Meredith is at her store pulling some jewelry for a stylist. 
Um, Brooks is still very upset with Seth for missing the fashion show. Comment below, does he need to get over it? I think he needs to get over it. There, I said it. So Seth is in town and it appears as if they've kind of like reconciled their marriage. I'm not really, I'm not really sure. So they both a few episodes ago, if you aren't aware, decided that they needed, they needed space from each other and decided to um, separate again. After talking it through, they both want to try to work on the issues and it just seems like they genuinely do care about each other. Like you can see that, but I'm still unsure about like what the issues are. Like none of them are really clear about what actually is going on and why they need to separate. They say it's like communication. They don't know how to communicate with each other, but I just feel like it's, it's a lot more than, than just communicating. And that's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. The one thing that I did find interesting Seth said that at the beginning of the marriage, he didn't grow emotionally and now he's ready and at that same stage where Meredith is at and he's willing to like put in the work and put in extra work and put in all the work and put in all the extra work and do all the things and just try to make it work, which, okay. I mean, I, I, I see that they actually do genuinely care about each other. Meredith though, she's out here saying that this separation was very different from every other separation. So like they've had multiple separations. I'm just, I don't know. I guess just at the end of the day, they're trying to make it work, but I'm just very confused with the whole the whole thing. So now moving over to Lisa, Lisa and her hubs are having a date night and the topic of work was um, was um, brought up. And the fact that Lisa just wants to add more to the plate. I mean, Lisa is very adamant about not turning any type of like opportunity down. Also her hubs brought up that she needs to be more present and try not to be on her phone all the time, which um, let's be honest, this woman is such a, a baller and a workhorse and on her phone and go, 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 that I don't even know if it's in her vocabulary to like, slow down. So what if I'm on my phone all the time? I'm getting things done and still engaging. Yeah, I can like listen to everyone talk and like sing Britney Spears in my head and still hear what you guys are saying. I can do all of this. Oh my God, Lisa, shady producer moment. So did you have a good time at dinner with John? Oh wait, what did you just say? I'm literally deceased. Like this whole lover or hater, I kind of am really starting to warm up to um, Miss Lisa Barlow. But just my opinion, I think at the end of the day, she should have a very strong separation between work and personal life. Because I think that line is getting blurred because she works all the time and her and her husband work together and they have a business together and they're it's just all work all the time and there's no real separation. That's what I have to say about it. Okay. I, I will say we did see a softer side to Lisa this week during her confessional when she had a, had a moment about her children. That was, it was really nice to see a, a softer side to Lisa. So now let's talk about the, um, the scene with Whitney and her father. I've got a lot of, um, thoughts about that scene. It really rubbed me the wrong way. So as we all know, Whitney's father is in a sober living community. So Whitney, she received an SOS text message from her dad because he was very angry because he was getting a roommate to live with him at this community. And he apparently made it very clear he did not want anyone to live with him. So Whitney and her husband and her father and counselors, they're all like having a, a an intervention. I don't really know. But her dad mentions he wants to leave the community and get back in the game. AKA, he wants to open his own business, get his own apartment, you know, open up his own salon. And he has really no clear plan on how to do that. He just wants to live his own life. <sighs> and then he brings up like 
yeah, I want help, I'm gonna need help, meaning I'm gonna need money. Oh God, it rubbed me the wrong way, guys. It really did rub me the wrong way. And then Whitney says that the first round of rehab, Whitney paid for it because her dad made a list of everything that he paid for for her while growing up and said that because he chose to have her as a child that she now like owes him. And then she ended up paying for the, um, the rehab, which is like, oh my God, she needs to not do that shit. She cannot take care of him at all anymore. Don't give him money. Don't let him live in your house. Don't give him cars. Don't help him with anything. It just, the whole thing, it just feels like he's so entitled. I'm entitled to this. And now add on the show money and being on Bravo. It just takes the whole like entitlement to like a whole other level. But like, that's what addicts do. They string you along and like guilt you and make you feel guilty to get what they want. And I could see right through the shit, y'all. I could see through the shit. That is what he's doing. He's trying to guilt Whitney into her giving him what he wants. And the whole scene watching it, I'm like, mm, I don't like you, the father, not Whitney. I love Whitney. But the dad, I'm just like, you're a douchebag. Like, fuck you. You want to leave this program that Whitney is probably paying. Like, if you leave this program early, it's only gonna, he's gonna be set back and he's not gonna be successful and he's not gonna stay sober. And there, I said it. This whole scene though, it just, mm, it rubbed me the wrong way and I did not like it. So now here comes the snowmobiling, y'all. The whole crew is having a snowmobiling day. This is what Salt Lake City is about. The snow activities. You can't have a Real Housewives of Salt Lake City and not have skiing and not have snowmobiling and not have anything in the snow. So I'm glad that um I'm glad that some snowmobiling was represented in the SLC Hani. And I'm a love I'm a love me some Heather. I love Heather. I love 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 her. This moment was everything Hani. So now after the snowmobiling, the gang is all around the bonfire, they're enjoying lunch, and they're all talking about how, you know, all of the spouses met each other, and Jen brought all, um, Coach um, Shaw brought up how his first date with Jen went, and Jen brought all of her cousins on the first date with Coach Shaw and that moment was just so funny him like saying like oh yeah me and Jen she brought all of her cousins and I was trying to get my groove on and they were all there and I took her out to eat and she's like well you're gonna take all of us out to eat and he paid for the dinner for her and all of her cousins that was just like a really funny moment but yeah Jen and Coach Shaw they really balance each other out like Jen is so crazy and Coach Shaw is like the center like calming her down they they get each other you can't have two Jens in a relationship because it's not gonna end well so Whitney pulls Heather to the side and fills her in on you know, what Jen told her about Meredith. Remember last week when Whitney and Jen were pole dancing and Jen brought up like, oh, well, if you're unhappy or not together, you're gonna go and look for it on the side, you know, and implying that something's going on between Meredith and her husband and it's like an arrangement or something and an, an alluding to unfaithfulness. Well, yeah, Whitney brings that up to Heather to see if Heather knew anything because Heather and Jen are so close. And y'all, Jen showed Heather pictures of Meredith with this other guy that she was supposedly seeing in New York. And Jen acted as if it was some deep dark secret and never to repeat it. So now Heather's a little pressed and upset that Jen is going around telling this to other people. Y'all, this is gonna get messy. It's going to get messy, and I have a feeling we're gonna see this come to a head very soon. 
So then we end the episode with Meredith and her husband, Lisa and her husband, all chilling with Jen at the chalet with Coach Shaw. So the topic of Lisa's tequila line and being a Mormon is brought up. So like, you can't drink alcohol as a Mormon. So it's just a weird sort of like oxymoron and they're all trying to kind of understand it. But Lisa's like, I'm not a cultural Mormon or as she puts it like Mormon 2.0. It helped me make sense of it all. I don't know. Like, if you want to have an alcohol line, have an alcohol line. Like, I don't fucking care. So all the husbands are hanging out. Jen, Lisa, and Meredith, they all get in the hot tub. Jen is opening up about her struggles with Coach Shaw being away so much and how it affects her. You know, the guys and the girls are all sort of like dissecting the ins and outs of their marriages. And here goes Jen again, digging and prying about Meredith's separation. It's just, I don't know what to think of it. Like, and then she says that the only reason that she's opening up so much is in the hopes that Meredith will open up and be honest about her separation because Jen knows what's going on. She has all this insider knowledge about, you know, Meredith seeing this other guy in New York and trying to like pry and be opened in the hopes that Meredith will be opened. It's just a little like self-involved in there. I, I said it and you know, that's, I give my honest opinion. I'm still like Team Shaw, Shaw Squad. But like, I have to call it when I see it. That's just who I am. So, I don't know. Jen is just sitting on this info about Meredith and it's just like, I don't know. And then it just makes you wonder like, how long ago did this like other guy in New York, how long ago was that? Was it recent? Was it like months ago? Was it a year ago? Like I need more context to really wrap my mind around it because right now I'm just really fucking confused about the whole like Meredith separation. But y'all next week, next week is going to be an episode. Top Golf will never be the same there, I said it. They're talking shit about my back to Mary? Shut the up about Mary. I don't give a so what did you guys think of this week's episode of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City? Did we love it? Did we hate it? What are your thoughts? Comment below. I'll be back next week for another Real Housewives of Salt Lake City review. Don't forget to get yourself subscribed to my channel so you don't miss out on anything. I will catch you guys in the next one. Get yourself subscribed and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.